Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction to Origaru. It is season 2, episode 7. And you know what to do. As always, if you want to see the reaction itself, just go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the parentheses, dot parts with real dots, and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now, this episode... Um, I mean, there's, uh, it, it's interesting to see, um, in many ways, this episode was very calm and, um, in many parts there was not like much in it, I thought like, um, and then we had the ending, which was like, what the hell, there was quite a bit in, um, and we meet some, let's say friends <laughs> again, uh, which is a bit surprising because I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if we would meet um Rumi again and i like it that we do uh because in many ways she is like a younger version of hickey at least sometimes so uh, let's go through it right um the episode started off with uh with the sliding door and i, I wasn't sure if there was like um a symbol at it uh i mean in in on top of this door where we go towards the club there is this um sign about the classroom and there are numbers, or I'm not sure if it's numbers, it's more like little emojis there. I don't know if this has any specific meaning. Um, but it might be, and I don't know, maybe you do know if there is a specific meaning of these emoji-like characters, which is at this sign. If it is, and if it is important for this series, I would really like to know, because um, I ask myself if this is like, I don't know the name of the club or um, if it is just, you know, for fun. Um, I was, I'm not even sure if there are more or different emojis with every episode. So that whenever they meet there, there are different things shown. Just guessing. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, we started off with, with Komachi and the fact that she has to learn for her exams. So she is in some kind of pressure now. And as the big brother that Hiki is, he kind of tries to help her. At least he should. Um, he, We haven't seen much of that. I guess he is doing it. Um, but he uses this fact at least partially as um, explanation why he has to leave early in the club. Um, I'm a bit sad about the fact that he is using this so that he can work um, for this strange council meeting that he has together with Iroha um, because he is lying. I mean, in the end, he is. Um, Yui knows it already. And as we find out in the end of the episode, Yuki knows as well. At least in the end, she does. I guess she already knew that this time. Um, and that's a weird thing because if... I still consider them something like friends, although that changes here. Um, so that's something that he shouldn't be doing, and he is by lying to them, widening the gap between them. Um, I again, I see his reasoning. He does it because he doesn't want to hurt Yuki, but by doing it and her being aware of it, he is hurting her more. So, just the opposite of what he wants to do. Um, I really was surprised about the fact that Yui was so very clear and um, logical, knowledgeable, I don't know how to say it, um, about what is going on in, in, in Yuki's mind, about in what the problem with Yuki is. So, this questioning of... Uh, is did she really wanted to become president? Did we make a mistake? Um, because for her it was like a game there as well, becoming the president. She realized that, I guess. Um, so she questions that, and she questions if um, they made they and that means her and mainly Higgy did a mistake. Um, they overcame problems before together, and Yuki was someone who loves overcoming problems. Who um, uh, wanted to use her intellect, her abilities to do it. So she enjoyed that and um, they kind of took it away from her. Um, not by by wanting to, it just happened, you know? Which is, by the way, leading to the end of this episode, which I will discuss later. 
Um, so, but I, I like the fact that Yui is so reflected about it. It, it is a different thing um, because she's always this, you know, joyful one, the one that always pushes fun in front. Um, it might very well be at least partially a, a mask, a, a masquerade that she's wearing in front of herself to not show her true emotions and problems. Um, but here we can see that there's a deeper and a reflected part inside of her, which I really like. Um, we had a very short moment with um, Ayama. And in I mean, this episode really showed different sides of characters. So what it showed for you was a different side, and we have seen a different side of Hayama, who said, um, I'm not always the good guy, you know. Which is surprising, because, I mean, from what we've seen so far, the, the first view, he always was like this shining paladin figure. And now he himself said, no, I did not offer to help Iroha. Um, you did. Because you are the one that never turns anyone down. You know, the negative guy, Hiki. The one who's always grumpy and um, has this presence of don't ask me, don't disturb me. On the other hand, in the view of Hayama, and he knows him, is the one that will never turn anyone down, surprisingly. While Hayama says of himself, I'm not always a good one. I have like a dark side as well. So that's interesting. Um, I like it when they show more depth in characters and different sides. So looking forward to see more of that. And um, we have Higgy following or looking out for Iroha. And I'm not completely sure why he's doing it. Um, it's a bit weird, you know, because um, the way that he is waiting for her in front of this store and carrying her bags and everything, it really, as I already mentioned in the last discussions, makes it look like he's interested in more there, in something different, in, in some kind of a relationship. Um... And I don't know why he's doing that. I mean, it might be just him, the way he acts, but um, it's weird. And then we are back at this strange council meeting um, with people saying nothing. Um, and we have little girls, and I'm not sure if there were any boys, I think we were only girls, um, from an elementary school. And we once again see Rumi. I really like her. She's an interesting character um, because in so many ways she is like Hiki and Yugi as well. Um, and he knows how to handle, at least partially, how to handle her. Um, I love that moment when he just sat next to her. You know, this is this moment, this idea of you don't have to say anything. You don't have to ask. You don't have to, I don't know, try to um, use words and... Um, analyze someone and do psychology stuff you just sit there and do the same you just spend time together she's not alone in this moment and she liked it you could see it because she wanted to say thank you to him and she didn't really want to thank for helping in the work she wanted to say thanks for spending time which she just brushed off and said go to the others you know um so there are multiple things in there. He, um, For a moment there, he can be himself. He doesn't have to think too much. He doesn't have to interpret what others think and feel and how they act and why. It is just Rumi who is in very many regards like him and he just can be himself for a moment. I think that's a good thing for him as well. Um, we have Tatsuka um, coming by offering help. And I'm not sure if he was there by accident or if he was searching for Hiki. Um, so there is someone who really likes you, who offers help by himself. And there was a moment where Hiki wanted to deny him, which I was a bit upset about because um, it was a genuine offer of help. But then he Hiki accepted it, at least partially. You know, he was talking about what's going on. Uh, he opened up about um, working for Iroha there and... Um, Totsuka did something that I think is important in a friendship, um, which is not done enough and is very often misunderstood. Um, the fact that if you are friends with someone and you realize and you think, because you feel it somehow or see it, that your friend is going over his or her limits. Um, 
that uh, something is going downhill, is going wrong. It's a hard thing to say that to a friend um, or if someone is doing making a mistake, but it is part of a friendship as well, to be honest. So, Ira, uh, Ira, um, uh, Totsuka is saying, you don't look well. You, um, you are going over your limits. You're burning out in the end. And you can see it um, sometimes when the camera was on um, Hiki that he does not really look well. Um, he looks kind of dry, you know, like he's a bit at least sucked out of life um, or burned out. So I like the fact that Totsuka is doing this step and of offering help here, um, which might be a bit of foreshadowing because seeing the, the general thing about the episode that this um, a festival which they want to create or have to create for Christmas is possibly not happening because they are just, you know, the others are just creating empty space and not really doing anything. Um, it might be happening that there will be a moment where to create this festival, the help of many people will be needed. And I kind of hope for that because there is sure someone like Totsuka who will help, who offered it. There are others like, as example, Yui, who will just join in because she is good natured. But... And I think, because this is where we're leading for the end of the episode, but it might show to um, Yuki that she is needed. Because she feels like she isn't. And I think that is what the problem is in the end of the episode. So let's talk about that. Um, the episode in general was okay, but the last minute or minute and a half um, before the outro was was great because it showed um, for a moment what, in my opinion, what I think Yugi is thinking. So um, there are two things. The one thing is that here. Uh, if you're trying to look out for us, then you're wasting your time. So Yugi thinks that Hiki is just in the club because he feels responsible for the girls and uh, that he has to help them because He's better and they are in need. Um, which in my opinion is not true. Hiki is there because, although he wouldn't admit it in the beginning, he enjoys the time there. He enjoys the time with Yuki and Yui. He likes it. Um, thus he is a character who kind of likes the fact that he's a loner and doesn't need anyone. That was hard on him in the beginning, but I think by now he changed and he developed. So, um... He likes spending time in the club and with them. And this is, I think, where Yugi is wrong. Because she really thinks, as it seems by what she said, that um, Hiki is just spending time there to help them because they, the girls, need his help. As I said, in my opinion, wrong. The If this festival, which is about to happen, is going downhill and they will need help doing it, the benefit would be that Yuki will see Hiki is not perfect. He's not the one who has always the answer. I mean, I can see where her point is coming from. Um, because most of the things they did in the club in the end used a solution from Hiki. So I can see that. That is one of the points that she was talking about. The other one, however, let's see if I can find that. Yeah. There. Um... I only do things, uh, I do things alone because I am alone. Um, and he asked her if she isn't the same like him there. He was referring to the being alone. Um, and she denies it. This is it. Um, the fact there's a lot of self doubt in her here. So she is not referring to the thing, the fact that she may be alone, um, but she is answering the part about doing things, having an answer, having a solution. And I think um, by seeing Hickey doing his versions and getting through with them very often and kind of being able to help on the one hand, and him destroying her run for the presidency. 
um, she is in a massive amount of self-doubt by now. As I said, I'm just speculating here. Um, but her saying that she only acted like she could do anything or knew everything, um, that is a massive amount of self-doubt and it, it pairs in with this idea that Higgy was there just to help them. Because in the beginning we had just two major characters. We had, although Yui was nice, it was Yuki and it was Hiki in the club, talking about uh, the fact that um, they had different opinions on how to handle stuff and how to bring in solutions. Yuki had her very own ideas and they were valid. She was good at what she did. Um, we could see it when she helped with different stuff that she was a working horse as well, as is Hiki. And he kind of, without wanting to, overpowered her and was a bit better at some occasions. And now she's in doubt and denial and she's really, really questioning her own uh, self-worth. She is having problems there. And um, thus I can understand that she's kind of asking him to leave the club. Leave or at least um, temporarily leave the club. Um, because every time she sees him now, she will be reminded about that. I think that is a major problem she has there. If, however, this festival is going haywire and Higgy will be in need of help, it might have the benefit that she realizes he's not so perfect um, and she realizes that she may have ideas that will help. Just guessing. So I kind of hope that um, this is where we are going for, because, because I don't like um, strong people um, talking about mentally strong, you know, going down like that and um, succumbing to self-doubt, because that is something that is um, a harsh thing to happen to anyone, even to characters in a series. So um, I really hope that we will... Um, have some kind of a happy ending. As I said, I, I'm always in for a happy ending. Um, yeah, I think that's it about this episode. So the end scene was very, very strong, was really a good one. Um, she's always partially smiling there, but um, we had the moment where Hiki was reflecting on the fact that many characters are um, behaving differently. So she is the one that is smiling although she does not really smile it's just an outward thing Yui is always pushing a uh, fun in front of her and having fun even if she doesn't feel like that so um i i like the fact that um hiki is growing more and more and learning to understand what the people around him are and he's more and more doubting himself as well there um but not about his own abilities He's doubting what he's doing due to how he's influencing the people around him. So he is looking out for the people around him, trying to um, make it better, you know? So hopefully, hopefully he will. That's it from me this time. I hope you liked. I did. It was an interesting episode and I look forward to the next time. Until then, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. My name is Rolex and Panic. Goodbye and out.